What's up guys, this is Marcus from Studio One Expert, and in this video we're gonna be expanding a little bit further on our macros that we were working on. So if you recall, in the last video we had a look at creating a macro that would uh, do delete time. Uh, so it was doing, we could select a range and then we could do a command delete, and what that would do is it would delete the time and it would clear the range. So for example, if I wanted to get rid of everything here, I could just make that selection, do my command delete, and then it would automatically delete that time, clear the range, and put the cursor at the beginning of the event. Okay, so let's go ahead and undo that for a sec. So now I wanna have a look at a different type of, um, kind of like a variation on that. Okay, so I've got a voiceover track here that I'm cutting together. And what I've done is I'm kind of, you know, snipping it together and I'm using my delete time macro, which is great. But I've got a circumstance here where what I've done is I've copied a section in particular, it's this section to that of the actual. And I've copied this and I've done this by doing, you know, I've selected my range I wanted here. And then with that range highlighted, I just did an option drag and I just brought it over right to exactly where I wanted it. Um, and I replaced uh, the other event. So what I wanna do here is I've done this because this is a better part and then I have the very end of the sentence here, but what happens is we have this double word here. So what do I mean by that? Okay, well let's zoom in a little bit. So let's play from the start of here and you keep your eye on this part right over here and you'll be able to hear it to that of the actual, actual amplifier. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get rid of this. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the way that I would do this. Okay, so a um, little long-winded, but manually what I would do is I would automatically go to my cutter tool. I would snip to somewhere probably about there. And then I'm gonna move over to my pointer tool over here. I'd select this event. I would copy this uh, event to my uh, range here. And then I would go ahead from there. Then I would go ahead and do my command delete. So that's a lot of steps, but it's gonna give me exactly what I want. So if I was to play this now to that of the actual amplifier. Okay, so, so that sounds really good. That works out perfectly for me. But like I said, I wanna to try to find a way to simplify this. And I've been meaning to add this macro in for a while and I just kinda of got sick of it today and I said, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do a video on it. So maybe some other people might be able to benefit from this as well, especially people who edit their own voiceovers and happen to work uh, the way I do, which is in a linear fashion and then do the editing after. All right, so let's go ahead here and have a look at how we can create this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we need to kind of make sure we understand the steps that we wanna do here. Um, so like I said, the first thing is I'd be, you know, my I would start off, my starting point would be, I would be on the cut tool and I'd make the first point manually. And then what I need to do is uh, let's go from here, let's go, let's use our left arrow key and let's see which event gets selected. Okay, so it actually skips this one, and then I'd have to go back to the next event. So I'd have to go to the right one to select this actual event. And then from here, I'd wanna to switch to tool one. And then from here, I'd want to um, create ranges on the tracks like that. And then I would do my delete time and then I would clear the uh, ranges. Okay, so let's just uh, memorize those steps there or you can write them down, whatever works for you the best. So what we're gonna do here is now we're gonna create that macro So we and then at the end, we're gonna map that macro, we're gonna map it out to a keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the macro tab now and let's click this little wrench icon. I'm gonna go to the macro organizer. We're gonna create new. Let's call this shuffle delete two. Okay. I've already got the one in there and I know what that does, so that's fine. All right, so now we need to start thinking about our steps here. Okay, so we know what we're gonna switch to our slice tool or our cutter tool, and we're gonna manually make the very first slice where we want it to go. So the next thing that we need to do is we know that we have to go to the left one uh, so that it selects the previous event, and then we have to move and select the next event. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, let's go left, Okay, so I'm gonna click left and let's go ahead and add that. Okay, so now under navigation, we wanna select the next event. So let's go ahead and I wanna choose uh, next. We'll type that in and where are we here? Next event, so let's go ahead and add that. Okay, so now the next thing I wanna do is just because when I'm done this macro, I wanna be on the pointer tool. Uh, what I wanna do is I might as well just switch my tool. So let's go ahead and click tool and we'll go to tool one, let's add that. Okay, so now it's gonna select the tool one. Uh, 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we want to create ranges on tracks. So let's go create, uh, create ranges on tracks. Let's go ahead and add that. Okay, now the next step, now that we've taken the event, so the event that's selected, which is the exact size that we want to delete, uh, it's now made the ranges match that exact size. So now the next thing I want to do here is a delete time. So now let's go delete and we'll go to delete time. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And then lastly, I want to make sure that it deselects everything after that. So let's go back up here and let's go to deselect all. Okay. So let's go ahead and add that. Okay. So now we've mapped out everything that we need for this macro to do. So let's go ahead and click okay. Okay, so the next step here, let's just move this off to the side, is I want to map out that macro to a keyboard shortcut because I don't want to have to uh, have my macro tab open or anything. So let's go uh, shuffle. Okay, so shuffle delete two, found it right there. And let's pick a key command. So our first one is uh, command delete. So let's do option or alt delete for this one. And I'm going to go ahead and assign this. We'll go ahead and click apply and okay. All right, so now we should be good to go. So let's just back up here so we can have another quick listen so we can remember what exactly we need to do to that of the actual, actual amplifier. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out. So I'm gonna switch to my slice tool. I'm gonna choose a point, let's just say right there, and now I'm gonna do an option delete. Bingo, to that of the actual amplifier. Okay, let's go ahead and undo that again for a quick second, and we'll do that one more time. I'm gonna switch to my slice tool. I'm gonna snip where I want the front end of this event to be butted up to here. And now I'm gonna go ahead, option delete, to that of the actual amplifier. Perfect. Okay, so that's making an adjustment on a previous macro that we did and kind of combining a whole bunch of stuff into one. So this is really, really handy if you're working in a linear fashion editing uh, down the timeline and you kind of move further down the timeline and you find the point that you want to come in at and then you find the exact point that you want to come out at, you can kind of do a bunch of steps in one process and you're you know right back on track and you can get moving again. Anyway, so I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.